This looks like real life to me. Having that large screen size too is great. Hey everyone, today in this video, we're gonna be checking out the BenQ PD3205U design monitor. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. The brand isn't seeing the video until you are seeing the video. If you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's the retail box and packaging, very simple and straightforward. We got BenQ's logo and branding, it says design monitor on it our model number, and this is a 32 inch monitor, IPS panel, 4K resolution. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the parts and components besides the monitor itself. As you can see, we got a ton of different accessories here in the box. First up, all of our product literature. This does come with a three year warranty. They also have a really helpful quick start guide that explains more about the KVM. So you can set up a proper KVM connection with this monitor, connecting two sources right here, showing you how you can do that, whether it's DisplayPort HDMI or DisplayPort or HDMI and USB Type-C, and how to switch between the different sources here. They even have an included USB key for us to use. Next, we have our factory calibration report walking us through the test results. So gamma curve chart, color temp, our delta E value, we average 0.3937. So basically under one for the value means there's no perceivable difference for experts when comparing two colors side by side. And around two or three for your delta E value, no significant difference for the average person. Additional info on the back for you. Really nice that this is factory calibrated for us. Next, we have all of our different cables. So we got our power cable, one included HDMI cable, one included DisplayPort cable, one included USB Type-C to Type-C cable. We have our USB cable here to take advantage of the built-in USB ports on the monitor. We also have our nice KVM switch and control right here that we can connect. Looks great, multiple buttons, nice scroll knob and wheel. I like that. Then we have our stand. So the stand is gonna be in two pieces right here. These two pieces, here's the base plate, nice and heavy. Got the BenQ logo and branding on it. Tool-free installation as well. No tools needed to set that up. And then lastly, we have a back cover piece of plastic that we can snap in place to the monitor itself. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the monitor. Here's a look at the back side of the monitor. I really like the finish that we have on the cover. I think the color looks great. I'm glad it's not super glossy or anything like that. We got the BenQ logo and branding here where we're gonna install our mount. Looks like we got a Visa mount option too if you want to use your own monitor mount. We have our power button and our menu control buttons are right here. Kensington security lock on the other side, additional product information, as well as our KVM pairing diagram, USB one and display port, or USB two and HDMI. Let's look at all the different port and IO options here. So we got where we're gonna connect our power cable, USB type C, display port, HDMI, where we can connect our KVM switch control, our two USB options and our two USB type A ports there. Looking at it from the very bottom, we have some ventilation here with an indicator light. You can get a feel for how thick this monitor is. It definitely curves out around the back and then gets slimmer towards the sides. We'll flip it up. So same thing you can see right here. Narrower, thicker, narrower again. On this side of the monitor, we have our USB options right here, which is great. So we have a couple different USB Ports. We got a type A and a type C, and we also have a headphone jack there. And now let's flip it over to the front so we can look at the display here. 32 inches, measure diagonally, full 4K resolution. So that's gonna be 3840 by 2160. 60 hertz for the refresh rate. Very slim bezel along the sides and the top, almost bezel-less. And then on the display itself, I'm gonna put my fingertip to where the pixels actually end. So you can get a feel for when we have this turned on, how far the screen goes to the edge of the display. Right about there. Everything looks really nice. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand installed. So we have two pieces for the stand that we have to install together. This is a tool-free installation. So the pieces only line up one way, as you can see right here. So just gently place them on each other and tighten down the bolt 
on the bottom. Just finger tight. There is an option if you wanted to use a flathead or Phillips head screwdriver, you could, but that's not gonna be necessary. We have both pieces attached together. Now we just have to snap it in place on the back of the monitor. So we have these two metal prongs here that are gonna go in first, line it up like so, then it snaps right in. If you ever have to remove it, there's a button on the back you can press and repeat that in reverse order. But line it up, snaps right in, and there we go. We now have everything set up and the stand has successfully been installed. So this included stand is awesome. We have a full range of movement and motion. Currently you're looking at it in the lowest height setting. We can go ahead and raise it up to the highest height setting or you could land somewhere in between. There's also the ability to rotate this to the left and to the right. Don't forget about tilting. So we can tilt it back or tilt it down. And when we have it in the highest height setting, we can also rotate this to change our viewing experience and angle. So now instead of our horizontal landscape viewing experience, we have our lovely vertical or portrait viewing experience. And if you wanna know, it doesn't go all the way around, but we can twist it this way. And then let's try the other way. We can't move the other way. So keep that in mind. The movement is fixed to rotating it just this one certain way, but that's not a big deal. I'm really glad that we have the option to adjust the monitor fully in every position that you'd want. So we have our monitor plugged in, powered on and connected to our desktop PC. I also went ahead, I connected the hot key puck. See what Ben Q did there? Not the hockey puck, the hot key puck. <laughs> We also have buttons on the back to bring up the menu and shortcuts, but let's go ahead. We're gonna have some fun using this little puck here to control everything. So let's bring up the menu. Let's look at it in more detail. There's a lot to unpack here. So we're just gonna glance over all the key settings and features that you have at your fingertips to customize as you see fit. So first up, we have our display settings here. You may notice we can adjust and change our input. We have picture in picture settings and we can rotate that as we see fit, as well as picture by picture and rotate which one you want in the left or the right. So very nice that we have those settings here. Super helpful when you have multiple computers connected, you can display them both on the screen. Then we have our color options here. So we have different color modes. We have dual view color modes. We can adjust our brightness, our contrast, our sharpness. We also have some advanced settings here. So you can view those. Next, we have our KVM switch settings. This will activate once we have our two devices connected and we can choose USB-C, USB-1, and USB-2, what we have connected to each one. Follow the chart and diagram on the back of the monitor. Next, we have our audio settings. This does have built-in speakers. We can adjust the volume. We can quickly mute it. Then we have our custom key settings. So we have multiple keys on the back, two keys on the back of the monitor that we can customize. So here's your different options for both of those. And we can customize, looks like the controller keys on our hotkey puck right here. We have three of those we can choose. Rotation key settings, controller key dial. So we have our custom key options right there, really nice. And then lastly, we have our system settings. We can configure our USB, power settings, some additional advanced options right here, system settings, Burn in cleaner, which is nice. You can run that product info and then we can reset everything. So a really nice, logical, easy to navigate menu. In fact, I'd argue with this really nice puck, it's probably the best monitor menu I've ever navigated and used. This is really a nice feature. And if you're familiar with BenQ products, you might recognize this puck in similar design and form factor with some of their built-in screen bar monitor lights. I really like those. So it's great that we have another nice design here. Something that's really easy to control, set at our desk. And that's really beneficial too, if we're gonna take advantage of that built-in KVM switch to easily configure this to what works best for your setup. Now I wanted to show you within Windows, our advanced display settings, the current readout that we're getting for the monitor. We are getting our full 4K resolution at 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz for our refresh rate. We can navigate down and you'll see that that's gonna be the max refresh rate that we can get. So let's click it. And there we go, we're capped at 60 hertz in 4K for our resolution and refresh rate. So now with our 4K video up on the display, I thought we'd look at the different color mode settings in more detail. So first up we have our sRGB mode right here and we'll cycle through all the different 
color options that we have. Again, it'll vary depending on what task or content you're consuming, what you're working on, but they're each going to tweak and change the image as you would expect some more drastically than others. And don't forget, we have our user settings there too. If you want to customize it yourself, sRGB looks great. I mean, if you're doing animation or CAD work, low blue light. So if your eyes are sensitive, you're staring at the screen for a long time. There's a lot of different color modes here that look really nice. Included with your monitor is a factory calibration report like the one shown here going over uniformity, illustrations, gamma, curves, color temperature, delta E results and values. I also wanted to see what we got putting this monitor through a display cal test. They advertise 99% sRGB. And sure enough, with our testing results here, even with our non-factory equipment, so to speak, we are showing 99% right on the dot for our sRGB gamut coverage, which is what they advertise. So that's always a good thing. And it's great to have this calibration report because most of the time, nobody's gonna have access to factory calibration tools. You might have some tools like we have here, but even then it's great to see what the brand and the factory can report on your particular panel. In our case, using DisplayCal, we're showing that 99% sRGB for our coverage, 73.7% Adobe RGB coverage, and 85.2% DCI P3 coverage. In regards to volume, we're showing 122.4% for sRGB, 84.3% for Adobe RGB volume, and 86.7% DCI P3 volume. Now we have the UFO test pulled up on this display at 4K resolution and 60 Hertz for the refresh rate. You can see three different FPS values with the UFO moving across the screen at 15 FPS, 30, and 60. You may notice as the FPS values increase, the alien gets much smoother. So the motion looks great, really smooth, no stuttering, sputtering, things like that. That just shows you the importance of having a higher refresh rate and being able to push a higher FPS value. This is most important, I'd say, for gaming, where you're gonna want the smoothest gameplay and footage possible. But pretty substantial difference as we basically double the FPS values every time. You can see how 60 FPS looks at 60 Hertz at 4K. While this monitor has a lot of use cases and scenarios for professionals, let's not forget what we all want to be doing and most likely are spending our time doing at work, browsing the web. So this is what it looks like to browse the web with this BenQ monitor. We have the YouTube trending page pulled up right here. Very fluid, responsive, clear and crisp. Everything's really detailed. Love having the 4K resolution. Everything looks really nice. Same can be said for browsing The Verge. So if you wanna use this to catch up on social media, read a bunch of news, that sort of thing. Here's how it's gonna load different images, different sizes, different headers, text, links, ads, you name it. Clear and crisp, very thorough. Let's just click on an article right here, have it load in. No issues. Very, very nice. And then lastly, you wanna be shopping online. So we got Amazon pulled up. Looks great displaying all the images, videos, all the different product listings. Everything looks great. Now we're testing out the built-in speakers. Currently we're at volume 100. We're listening to a Music Chef song and Music Chef is home to stream safe music for content creators and it's free. So let's give it a listen here. Most of the sound is being pushed out the top. Yeah, I think they're at the top. Definitely sounds like it. For being at volume 100, I was hoping we'd have richer and fuller sound. I'm a big fan of the BenQ Mobius speakers. That's the monitor right here. They have the best sounding speakers I've ever heard on a monitor. It's basically got a mini sound bar built in. I'd like to see that quality on this monitor. They're not bad at all, don't get me wrong. And then we can adjust the volume. I haven't configured any keys for it, but pretty easy to get to right here. 
honestly, as we adjust it down, it's hard to tell once we hit like 50 to 100. There's not much difference in the sound to me. Obviously, that'll vary depending on what you're listening to as well. But with this monitor, I was hoping for slightly better speakers, but they're definitely above average in that regard. I'm just being really critical, especially because BenQ makes the monitor that has the best speakers in my opinion. So I'm spoiled by that. And I want to see that in all of their products, not just the Mobius lineup. Now it's time to test the input lag on this BenQ monitor. Keep in mind, input lag is different from response time. This has a five millisecond advertised response time. And a response time is the amount of time it takes a pixel to change from one color to the other. Basically our input lag is going to be the amount of delay or lag between when the signal is sent and when it's displayed on our monitor. So let's see what sort of results we get here. Look at that, 0.9 milliseconds, 1.1, 1 millisecond. So we're getting right around one millisecond for our input lag, not bad at all. I'd say that's average standard, what you would want to see and should expect with a monitor. I've seen some of those go all the way up to 18, 19 milliseconds for a monitor. Usually TVs can be substantially higher than that for their input lag, but for a monitor with this panel, with our IPS panel, that's definitely well within the ballpark. Will you notice any sort of lag or issues along those lines with this monitor? Not at all. Now let's talk about the picture in picture or picture by picture picture modes that you have with this monitor. So now we have two different devices connected, PlayStation 5 via HDMI and our desktop gaming PC with DisplayPort. Everything's displaying great. We can rotate them. We can have them swap images if we'd rather put the desktop here and the PlayStation 5 here. We can also go into picture in picture mode so we can have one within the other. I do want to point out right now when we activated this, and having both together. It defaulted to giving us an HDR mode for our display. So when I go into the settings here for our color, our color mode, our option really is just HDR. So everything else is grayed out right now. We just have HDR set up and that's what you can expect here with our PC and our PlayStation 5. But obviously we can control the PlayStation, we can control our PC. Really convenient to basically have two displays in one. Obviously think about the KVM. So if we connected two computers together, we would also have our USB mouse and keyboard connected to the monitor and then we can toggle between the two. So really cool that we have this feature. Now let's look at picture in picture and see how it looks. So here's the picture in picture setup. So we have the PlayStation 5 in the background and our computer in the smaller window, but we have different options here. So we can adjust it as we see fit. Let's go back and let's just do the quick swap option. So if we want to keep it where it's at, we can swap the two different inputs. So now we have our desktop in the background and we have the PlayStation 5 in the smaller window. Really awesome, what a cool feature. Maybe you wanna put you know, your favorite sports game on, something like that, watch in the background, favorite streamer, but still play games yourself, whatever it may be. You have the luxury to do that if you want with this monitor. For those of you wondering about gaming on this monitor with next gen consoles, the answer is yes. You can game with this monitor in 4K at 60 Hertz, whether it's the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. Now we're looking at some gameplay footage. We have Forza 5 up on the display right now, 4K resolution, 60 FPS at our 60 Hertz refresh rate. Check out the footage, look at the attention to detail, how everything's being displayed on this monitor from the car and the reflections to the horizon, the changing landscape, the fast yet fluid movement and motion of the cars driving and racing different lighting environments, shadows. Also listen in to the speaker quality again with our in-game audio. This looks like real life to me. Having that large screen size too is great. Wow, that looks so good. Now we're looking at some gameplay footage of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Getting around 60 FPS or so at 4K. 
Look at the water, the shadows, the different lighting environments, the sky and the horizon. Got some smoke from some fires, birds in the air, characters walking around. Look at that. Love the different colors and how everything looks on this display. I wanted to spend a minute talking about the USB ports on this monitor. This information is coming directly from BenQ's user guide and manual. They say for this USB type C port on the side, it's for data transfer only. Same with our USB 3.2 Gen 1 port right here, downstream connecting to the USB devices. So that's the two ports right there. Now on the back, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, same thing, downstream connecting to the USB devices. But our USB Type C port on the back, this one's for video, data transfer, and power delivery up to 65 watts. Now, with all that being said, I went ahead, I took my smartphone, plugged it in to the USB ports on the side, and ironically, both of them did start charging my device. Now, it's not going to be fast charging or anything like that, but technically, in my experience, I was able to get power out of these to charge my phone, but we'll defer to what the manual says and we'll trust that. So just assume with these ports, they're for data transfer only, except the USB type C port on the very back, which can be for video data transfer and power delivery up to 65 watts. So there's a lot to love about this monitor, especially if you're a designer, this monitor is made for you and true to its name. So in the name of color, all things color, that's why you're gonna be gravitating towards this particular monitor. But as a bonus, there's some other great features too. Decent sounding built-in speakers, a nice KVM switch, picture in picture mode, picture by picture mode, and tons of USB ports, three type A, two type C. This monitor really has it all. Visa mount option, 100 by 100 if you wanna use your own stand, but the stand that they include has built-in cable management and we can swivel and rotate it as we see fit. I also really love having this built-in control right here that we can customize. I can't stress enough how nice of a feature this is. I want to see this in more monitors going forward. This is a fantastic idea and something that using it day to day, you'll really come to appreciate. And if you ever swap out to a different monitor, it's going to be something that you'll miss.